In 2018, Supergiant Games released its now critically acclaimed roguelike into an early access state. Here they spent two years garnering feedback from players and making requested changes in order to make the best game possible. And to say it paid off would be an understatement. Since its official release in 2020, Hades has won countless awards across the gaming industry, and it's really easy to see why. But about the sequel, it's um, well, it's it's uh, it's fucking amazing. I don't know who I'm kidding. Hades 2 is on track to becoming one of my favorite games of all time, which is absurd because on paper it's just more Hades, a game I never even finished. Now, now, I I know that sounds bad. I promise I played a fair amount of the original Hades spread across three different platforms. Yeah, I bought this game three times. That's how much I liked it. What I really mean is I just never made the credits roll, and if I'm honest, I don't even know how. But for those who are new to the franchise, here's a quick rundown of the plot established in the original. We play as this guy, Zagreus, the son of Hades and the prince of the underworld. He's on a quest to break free of his domain and escape to the overworld in order to be reunited with his birth mother Persephone against his father's wishes. You have to slash your way through hordes of the underworld's guardians under strict orders to halt your escape. Now, if my research is correct, and please feel free to correct me if it isn't, the game ends with Zagreus defeating Hades multiple times and finally being allowed to leave the underworld, reuniting with his birth mother and being one big happy family in the house of Hades with little sister Melanoi on the way. An overall compelling story with a satisfying ending, especially for a game not many play for the plot. And what has Hades 2 done? Well, exactly what a sequel should do. They've taken this world that was built up in the first game and raised the stakes on everything. This time around you're not running away from home, you're trying to save it. The story of Hades 1 was a lot more character focused, much more emotive and frankly prioritised world building. That's not at all a dig at the writers because they really knocked it out of the park creating a brand new rendition of characters as old as time. Greek mythology has had countless interpretations and storytelling, so making your take on it stand out from the sea of variation is a real challenge and something Hades 1 succeeded in brilliantly. With the core foundations in place, the next protagonist in this world could have a much more perilous quest ahead of them. Oh yeah, you don't play as Zagreus this time. Hades 2 features a new protagonist, I briefly mentioned her earlier, Melanoi. The daughter of Hades, the sister of Zagreus, whatever you want to call her, she's our character this time. And what do you know, she's got a much more harrowing task ahead of her, literally killing time. Well, I uh, I say literally, technically her task is to kill Kronos, who is the titan of time, but it's still, uh, it, it, it's, it's still quite the task. Kronos, originally broken into millions of pieces by the gods and scattered across the underworld, has reformed and enacted revenge on Hades by freezing his family in time and taking over the underworld. This chaos ensued just after Melanoi was born and sent off to Hecate for training and protection. She's the uh, goddess of witchcraft. Hecate is under the belief that it is Melanoi's destiny to become a titan slayer and end Kronos' reign. And I've got to say, these three characters, mwah. Probably the staple newcomers for Hades 2 and everything about them from the artwork, the voice work, the writing, is just, look, to anyone who claims video games don't count as art, I have a long list to show you and this game makes it. But video games can't just be about the art, and I haven't even begun to scratch the surface for what this game offers in terms of gameplay. And fans of the original will be happy to hear, it very much feels like Hades. But it's weird. These two games have struck this phenomenon where depending on which one you played most recently, the other will feel clunky, slow, and unresponsive. For example, I played 22 hours of Hades 2 in the first few days of its pre-release. After those initial few days, I knew I wanted to make this video, so I decided to go back and play the original for a bit of a comparison. But I found the movement a bit unresponsive to what I remembered. After maybe 30 minutes, this feeling went away, and I played buttery smooth Hades 1, just as I remembered, for 9 hours straight. What can I say, I like this game. The next day I hopped back on Hades 2 and had the exact same experience. It's not necessarily a bad thing, I don't see many people jumping to and from both games consistently, it's just a bit strange and I'm curious if any of you guys have had a similar experience. The only explanation my tiny brain can think of is just the fact that these games obviously run very similarly to one another, but they have subtle changes. One change that many people have picked up on has been to the movement, more specifically the changes to the dash mechanic. Veterans of Hades will know that you could upgrade the amount of dashes at your disposal to some mental numbers, but with base upgrades alone you could get a flat out upgrade of one extra dash, more commonly known as the double dash. As someone who isn't very good at these games, the double dash was huge, allowing for much faster movement and safer attacks for those armoured enemies that you couldn't stun. 
For you see, if RNG isn't on your side in these games, your health can become a very limited resource very quickly. And in those situations, the windows of invincibility that the dashes can offer become vital. But why do I mention all this? Well, dash upgrades are missing in Hades 2 as of its current early access. I've seen many people get a bit pressed about this change online and request a return of the upgrades, but I personally don't think it's a terrible change. I don't know, I'm mainly impartial to the decision. The double dash made the game easier, but the bosses in Hades 1 were designed around it. I feel that adding it back into Hades 2 now would require a complete rebalance of the combat in order to keep the difficulty in check. If they decide to return dash upgrades, I'll obviously use them, so Supergiant just do what you think will appeal to the masses. They haven't just stripped away a key feature and slapped a 2 on the end though, no no no. To compensate for cutting our dashes in 2 and to keep the pace of the game closer to the original, they've given us the ability to break into a sprint by holding the dodge button after a successful dash. This increases Melanoi's movement until you let go of the button, allowing you to still rush through areas or dodge consecutive attacks, it just lacks those invincibility frames. Tweaks are still being made to this sprint to keep the dash spammers of Hades 1 happy, as I must admit the speed you could get from spamming up to 5 invincible dashes was insane. However, I don't think the movement changes are the sole cause of Hades 2 feeling slow than its predecessor. I think it's the cast. No, 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 not that cast. This cast. In Hades 1, your cast was a small homing projectile that could deal big damage and inflict debuffs to those you target. It was incredibly easy to incorporate this into your gameplay and could be very effective, so with the knowledge of what we had before, the replacement cast in Hades 2 feels really underwhelming. I'm sure it could be really good, but I just find that I have to go explicitly out of my way to get any value out of it, or I just forget it exists. I digress, this could be a massive skill issue on my part, and the cast could actually be the strongest part of Melanoi's kit. I really don't know, but if you found any builds that synergize really well with it, please feel free to let me know in the comments because the cool thing about these games is that every run you do can be completely unique. In fact, this aspect has actually been really heightened for me in the sequel because of the card system. This replaces the mirror from Hades 1 and it's basically the main way you make yourself stronger after each run. In Hades 1, darkness was one of the materials you could collect on each escape attempt and this could be used on your return to upgrade Zagreus' abilities in battle, whether through health bonuses, material collection or straight up defying death. Death. It was an excellent sense of progression that really made you feel stronger after every failed escape attempt. But this system has been reworked in the sequel as the card system. Instead of choosing your upgrades in the mirror, after a run you spend ash that you find out and about to create arcana cards that upgrade Melanoi's abilities. These cards can have similar upgrades to those from the mirror, or they can completely define how you build yourself. They can give buffs to your cast, increase the odds of certain boons appearing, increase your damage to certain enemy types, or upgrade your magic abilities. The catch is, you can't take all the upgrades at once. To compensate for this, the bonuses each one gives feel much more impactful, and I personally prefer this a lot. The mirror system wasn't bad, it just felt a little limiting. With the cards, I find myself switching them out and changing the fundamentals of how I play every run, which really stops the game from growing stale. This is key, because already Hades 2 offers quite a bit more than Hades 1 did. In Hades 1, the underworld is split into three main sections. Tartarus, Asphodel, and Elysium. Each section is equipped with its own unique landscape, traps, and enemies, leading to a unique boss fight designed to stop Zagreus' escape. In Hades 2, the underworld is split into four main sections. Erebus, Oceanus, the Field of Morning, and Tartarus, which are also equipped with their own unique landscapes, traps, and enemies, leading to their own boss fights designed to halt Melanoi's progress. So, three new areas and one reimagined, all full with new materials to gather, enemies to slay, allies to assist you, now that already sounds like a lot of new content to work through. But then you get about halfway through the early access story and gain access to an entirely new route to take on the surface. This currently has two unique areas, Ephyra and the Rift of Thessaly, with more confirmed to be in the works. That's double the locations, double the boss fights, and just double the stuff to do in comparison to Hades 1. And the game's not even out yet. Supergiant have done tremendously well at creating a sequel that doesn't overshadow or get overshadowed by its original. I don't personally have any criticisms of the game, but if you do, just please bear in mind that this is in early access. The ending's not available to players yet, and the devs seem to be listening to any and all feedback. Already they've increased the movement speed because I wasn't the only person who felt it played a little slower, so if you have any concerns, voice your opinions by all means, but don't attack the devs. I truly believe they are trying their best to make the best game they possibly can. 
Thank you for watching this far. Regrettably, I haven't been as regular as I would like to be with uploads, but I am really trying to change this. If you liked hearing my opinions, please consider subscribing. It really does help out as much as everyone says it does, as well as liking the video. And hey, if you have any friends who are skeptical of Hades 2 or fans of its original, send this their way and spread the word. If you want regular updates to what I'm up to, you can join my Discord or follow me on Twitter. You can find those links in the description below. Thanks again very much for watching, and I hope to be on your screens again very, very soon.